One of the issues about uh, the Putin Prigozhin um, standoff is what did Putin do to Prigozhin to get him to back away from Moscow? So we know, we know that um, uh, before Putin fled to Tver, he issued a statement saying that he wanted the FSB to take out Prigozhin and at the same time to pardon the Wagner troops. They're well aware that the Wagner troops are the best bit in the Russian army, or the most efficient bit in the Russian army, if brutal and completely criminal. Now, we have to remember that Putin's raison d'etre is, uh, he, he's a spy. He's, he was trained in spycraft, not very good. I mean, he wasn't an effective spy. He wasn't a top spy. He was a handbag carrier for other people. So while the other people were, while the other spies were getting on with their job, he was holding the handbags of the wives and, uh, and, and he was showing them around Berlin. He was a tour guide and a handbag holder, but I'm sure some of it rubbed off. Now, Putin's natural desire is to behave like Lucretia Borgia. Uh, he's a He's an instinctive poisoner. He's not somebody with a gun. He's a poisoner. Uh, and his weapon of choice recently was, of course, Novichok. Let's not forget the spire of Salisbury Cathedral. Let's not forget um, uh, Sergei Skripal and his daughter, Yulia, um, the double agent. And indeed, the uh, people who died um, or who, who were poisoned afterwards, uh, Charlie Rowley, and Dawn Sturgis, who stumbled on the nerve agent by, um, because they were uh, homeless, I suppose. I mean, it, this ties together the Prince William story with the Prigozhin Putin story, doesn't it? But the the real the the, the real blackguards in that story are they uh, Anatoly Chapiga or uh, the pen name Ruslan uh, Boshirov, Alexander Mishkin or his pen name. Alex Petrov, or Denis Sergeyev, uh, the major general who didn't need a pen name, are uh, these people who claimed to be looking at the height of the spire and who were pasting or spraying Novichok on doorknobs. It's, it's cheap, it's cowardly, and it's very much in the playbook of Putin. So what did Putin do? And people have been suggesting that Putin threatened Prigozhin's family. Well, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? That makes perfect sense. There's no evidence. I'm sure no evidence will ever emerge. Um, but it makes perfect sense. Uh, Prigozhin hasn't been careful enough. Didn't even think uh, of that. Of course, it would be the first thought I would have. Um, and, and indeed, many of, uh, many of the people who I uh, have had dealings with are worried... Uh, you know, if they come over to the UK or if they come over to European uh, countries where they have links, what about their family left behind in Russia, their wider family? And how much are they likely to be punished or threatened by Putin and his, um, and his cronies? Um, now, we know that uh, Putin ordered the FSB to take out Prigozhin. We also know that the FSB went to uh, St. Petersburg in all, in all that flurry of, um, of activity uh, of, of planes to Tver, to St. Petersburg. Uh, some of the FSB went to St. Petersburg. They raided Putin's house. They, found, uh, they raided Prigozhin's house. They found a huge amount of cash. So I can't imagine that Lukashenko could have bribed Prigozhin with cash. He had plenty. It was uh, evidenced. No, I think I think it will turn out long in the future when some of the evidence starts to emerge that Prigozhin's family was threatened and Prigozhin ducked. That makes perfect sense. But Prigozhin now needs to be wary of Putin's agents and also of his own Wagner Brigade, who cannot be pleased that they were denied the opportunity of securing their victory. I think the rest of us need to be extremely pleased that, uh, that Prigozhin failed. Prigozhin was 
far more dangerous um, than simply a chef with a um, with an aberrant aubergine.